Hello Matrix and welcome to yet another video. So let's keep our STEM train moving. We're doing question 5 of the November 2020 IEB physical exam, physical science exam paper 1. Okay, so <clears throat> I think once we do this question 5, we're essentially through with this paper, don't you think? Because you guys don't seem to like the electricity type questions because I don't see a very reassuring response when it comes to those questions so I mean I've looked all over as in other people in the platform who I think are good at this uh, I mean at just the whole subject I still don't see so much of a reassuring response compared to Newton's laws uh, work energy and power related type of questions so maybe we should end it here and then do paper 2 but you're gonna let me know if you want it or I will decide myself if I'm gonna put it but I would rather not do what you guys don't want anyway let's look at question 5 here so we're doing momentum work energy and power okay now Question is, a bullet of 0 0.02 kg traveling at a velocity. So, <clears throat> they used the term velocity and not speed, okay? So, we know velocity is a vector quantity, so we must have direction for it. And then, of course, that velocity is of 300 meters per second east. So, yes. They stuck to the right thing because it is very important to know the direction in which this velocity is directed. Okay, embeds in a 1 kg wooden block resting on a horizontal surface. Okay, the block slides 4 meters horizontally before stopping. Now, here's the other thing if it stops, then that means friction is there because I mean, there's no other force that is supposed to be stopping it, it should pretty much carry its momentum endlessly. But if it stops, then it means there is friction. <clears throat> so that's just a clue we can get here. Again, we have a diagram. So we can choose here that to the east is positive. Okay. Already, if you choose to the east as positive, that would mean to the west is going to be negative. Now we can see that, look, this box they said is resting. So physics has some terms that have some implications. That means the velocity of this block is 0 meters per second in this instance. And then, of course, they said it stopped at 4 meters. So again, here the velocity is again 0 meters per second for that unit. Okay. So, <clears throat> I mean, this is a simple diagram, so no need to worry about it. But we just know that there's going to be friction here because it stopped. We should not hear that it stopped. So that now that they're telling us that it stopped, then we know that there's friction in this motion. All right. Now here's the story. State the law of conservation of linear momentum. Again, definitions, folks, is what you need to know. But all we know is that um, total linear momentum okay in a closed system is constant okay or you can say is conserved that's all but I mean if we say conservation and then we're gonna use the word conserved it doesn't sound right does it but it means the same thing anyway so <clears throat> That's just an easy definition. I mean, it's just one line, so you should not sweat about it. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't make any proportionalities, you know, come into the fore here, so don't worry about some complicated definitions. Now it says calculate the velocity. Did they say the magnitude of the velocity? No. They said the velocity. That means you're going to do its magnitude plus its direction. Of course, if we made a choice that eastwards is positive, 
then we expect a positive answer if it is going to be directed eastwards we're going to expect a negative answer if it is directed westwards so that is just the essence of this so let's just kill it as we go now we're going to have to apply our principle of conservation of linear momentum why because equations of motion are going to sink us maybe they're not gonna sink us huh? what do we want what the velocity for the velocity no we're not gonna win because we don't know the velocity that they leave together so that we can use equations of motion and all that so we don't really have much so we can't use our equations of motion so we have to use that principle of conservation of linear momentum okay so to answer question five so we're doing 5.1.2 this time around so we know that p before collision equals p after collision okay that's where you begin okay and then what do we do we know that this implies the momentum that's going to be the mass of the bullet I'm going to use small letter b multiplied by the velocity of the bullet okay plus the mass of the big block so let's just use a capital letter b there multiplied by the velocity of this wooden block will equal but after collision we can see that they moved together so immediately after this collision they are moving together that distance so we're going to add their masses together so it's going to be this 0, 0,02 of the bullet to, to, don't do this it's mass of the bullet plus mass of the wooden block multiplied by this velocity that we want okay I'm just gonna write V now what do we want we can substitute the mass of the bullet is 0, 0,02 multiplied by the velocity was 300 remember we chose east as positive so this is going to be positive plus this one is 1 kg okay we don't write anything you see now I don't know why I wanted to write 1 kg it's just 1 multiplied by 0 okay because it was at rest initially <coughs> then we have 0, 0,02 plus 1 times V and then of course here you don't need to complicate your life already we know that our velocity is just going to be this sum divided by this number and then of course this is essentially 0 because any number multiplied by 0 is just off so we're going to have 0, 0,02 times 300 divide by 1 comma 0 2 because that sum is just that so very easy question I mean when you get a question on the conservation of linear momentum even if you see the marks are big it just doesn't mean much it's very easy so you do not want to waste your breath thinking this is going to be hectic no I don't want so I'm getting 5,88 to two decimal places meters per second. But remember, this is positive, so we can easily say eastwards. So I will just use that arrow. Even if you didn't write, the fact that you chose to the right or east as positive, the answer came out positive. It already captures the direction. Okay. So you see this type of questions where you can make such decisions it already solves the issue of you know deciding the direction okay so I mean that is pretty important these substitutions here are pretty important and then the answer so this is how you score your five marks there see you can even if you didn't get to the answer sometimes some substitutions will assist you in getting there so let's continue that was the velocity immediately after collision so this is 5 comma 1 comma 3 what is the next story here it says state the work energy theorem ah another definition 
very easy stuff you know that w net equals the change in an object's kinetic a kinetic energy not potential energy all right so that is that you just put it in words you can say the net work done by a force or by a net force in an object is equal to that object's change in kinetic energy I'm not gonna go through it in words I already know my writing is not the best so I won't even attempt now let's go on to this one question says now hence now once you hear that word hence it means it has some relation to the previous right but again they didn't say use your work energy principles or they didn't dictate so you can still do it any other way you choose but it says now calculate the magnitude of the frictional force that brought the block to rest do you see already spotted that there was friction and they're confirming it all right not a big deal so we've got two things now that we can do because when we want force we can use our equations of motion because now we know the velocity of these two together immediately after collision let's just say this is them immediately after collision okay we know that they left at 5,88 meters per second in that direction and now they are together at zero and they traveled this distance so we can actually find the deceleration and therefore use mass times acceleration because the only resultant force here was that frictional force there was no other force pretty much this moved forward because of the momentum of the bullet so they were just being carried by momentum not a problem so we can handle this one first by using our equations of motion so what do we know we know the initial velocity we know the final velocity we know the displacement we want acceleration so the best equation for this is this one v final squared i don't like this though v final squared equals v initial squared i feel like this is just torture guys plus 2a delta x because this is horizontal so we use x I hate this one here's the proper formula that we used and I feel like this is simple the final velocity was always denote, denoted as V initial velocity was denoted as u and then 2a times this delta thingy was just s s meant displacement so you'll treat it as a vector so you always look at the resultant displacement not just you know all these other components that led to it all right again you are unfortunately stuck with this thing it's part of your curriculum as annoying as it is this implies what was the v final zero because we saw that they both stopped okay then what is this the initial velocity was 5,88 then we square it plus 2 times acceleration into what is the displacement it was 4 meters so you see here we are in a very good space therefore when we isolate our a we transpose this it becomes minus 5,88 squared divide by 2 times 4 okay which is just 8 now let's see what is that 5,88 squared divide by 8 I get 4,3218 so you know what this is an intermediate step of course it's gonna be negative so an intermediate step I never round off so I write everything as it is but if it is too long I can take up to three decimal places it's, it is much safer now remember this negative already tells you that it's a deceleration it's opposing the direction of motion now I know that the resultant force is the friction so 
I also know that the resultant force is equal to ma, according to Newton's second law of motion. This implies that the frictional force, because that's the only resultant force in there, is going to be the mass of these two together. So it's going to be 0, 0,02 plus 1 multiplied by this acceleration we found. Oh, what are you writing? 4,3218. Then we can round off at the end. What is that going to be? So this is 1,02 times 4,3218. So my answer is negative, right? It's minus 4, 41 newtons. Now you round off to two decimal places there. This is fine. You don't have to explain the direction when the sign is negative because we already chose forward as negative. That means this is going to be eastwards. If you ignore this, then you have to show the direction. If you write it, you're already capturing its direction. So it's a vector quantity, and we are going to deal with it. In fact, they said magnitude. So once they say magnitude, even if you don't make up for the sign or the direction, you are going to be forgiven. But I said to you, rather treat your vectors as vectors, even if it's not required. It will help you along the way to not miss it when it is indirectly required. So that was four marks. Okay, so what can we do here? Of course, for identifying some formula and the entire substitution is all right, uh, but maybe that is a bit too much. Then we have a mark there, and then we get a mark for this last one. It's okay. What about this substitution? Maybe we can drop a mark elsewhere. I mean, maybe we can just say no, man. We have to balance things out, so that is fine. Okay, you can have your four marks over there. And you are smiling, okay? Let's just try and explore this a little bit so that we don't become too complacent. Sometimes physics has multiple options, so you can see it any other way that is possible. So this is two-step approach. Can we find a single step approach to this answer. Maybe we can. What do we know? We know that if we use our work energy theorem, the net work done on an object by a particular force, that force should be a resultant force, is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. So, but what is this force? This is going to be the force of friction because that's the resultant force times delta x, which is this annoying component here, cos of theta, to show that you're going to treat this as a vector, so to speak, equals um, half of the mass into v final squared minus v initial squared. Let me just keep to this annoying formula and stop making complaints about it because I'm not going to change it anyway. Cry or not, this is times, what was the direction? It was 4. Cos of, now what is theta? Remember, this frictional force is going to do work in the opposite direction of motion, right? So that means it's going to be a straight line which is 180 degrees equals 1 over 2. The mass is of the bullet together with the block multiplied by the initial velocity was 0 minus the in, uh, sorry the final was 0 because they stopped and then the initial was 5,88 squared. Okay, the Peter I ran out of space there. So F frictional. Now cos of 180 is minus 1. Alright? So that is minus 1 already. And now there's a little bit of a situation, don't you think? Yeah. 
there's a little bit of a situation here the frictional force itself ah what am I gonna say man something is not adding up already that's why I'm panicking right now I'm already panicking because it's not doing what I wanted to do yeah retoch don't do this to me hmm I don't like it but yeah doesn't matter anyway so this is going to be uh, <clears throat> this is f into minus 4 basically equals let's see 0 comma 0 2 is gonna be 0 comma 0 1 right let's see 0 comma 5 times 0 comma 0 2 is basically 0 comma 0 1 okay and we're going to have here 0 comma 0 1 into minus 5 comma 8 8 squared okay but the minus is in front so don't include it in the square it doesn't work like that okay so what do we want we want friction so therefore our frictional force is going to be this product here 0 comma 0 1 into minus 5 comma 8 8 squared all divided by minus 4 my problem is that my answer is going to come out positive and I didn't want that because it has to be negative but since we are dealing with the magnitude it's not a big deal so we're going to say this one times 5 comma 8 8 squared I get that one divided by minus 4 so I get here an answer of I man, this is nonsense what is going on here zero comma zero one times five comma eight eight squared that divide by four ah what is going on here man hmm oh no 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 that's a big mistake there was one in there there is one yeah red dog you see now this thing of summarizing things wrongly there is a one i'm forgetting there so it's zero it's one comma zero two times zero comma five here which i should get zero comma five one okay and then yeah we multiply this by 5,88 squared that's 17 divided by 4 that gives me now 4,41 newtons you see and the answer doesn't match double check because the method may be correct but maybe the answer is wrong but now this one is to the west okay sometimes the signs can mess can mess you up because I don't know what I'm not doing right here. Something must be wrong, but we'll see. It's not a big deal. Okay, um, you see, this is a one-step approach compared to the two-step approach. So, I mean, you can choose whichever you like. So that is good, and then this substitution. And I think this substitution is important. The rest is your mathematical skills, which you're not really being tested for them here. This is not mathematics, it's physics, so we just apply maths. So for all the techniques and your skills, we're not really impressed <laughs> or impressed by the application. Okay, guys, so this is your option two which is much simpler than doing the two-step approach but ah, learn whichever you can make sure you get it done when you see it started to blink this thing come on camera stop blinking you're not allowed yeah 
be doing a crime when you blink. It's not even allowed. Okay, guys, let's move. We don't have time. Now, the next question says, During a basketball tournament, a student analyzes the motion of a ball. The ball is thrown vertically up, I mean, vertically downwards and rebounds as shown. Now, it says a ball is measured to have a velocity. Again, they're using the very good word, velocity. And now you have vertical motion here, right? So let's just already say we're going to choose upward. I always prefer upward as positive. I find it easy to work with this like that. And then if up is positive, then down is negative, okay? All right, as it passes level A, and then the height of A is 2 meters above the ground. The ball strikes the ground and bounces back to level B. The mass of the ball is 0 0,60 kgs. Assume air resistance is negligible. So there's our sketch diagram. So they've done it for us. We don't have to imagine it. But at times they can give you just the statement and you have to figure it out. So we already know that fine. If this is a free fall, because I mean there's nothing else carrying this. So it's just falling on its own. So we know that here G is going to be minus 9,8 meters per second squared. Right, it's going to travel this distance and that, in fact, is going to be negative now because we chose up as positive. So the question is, what is its velocity there? That's the question mark. So, we have to answer that. Okay, that's easy. We can use our vertical motion equations here to answer that question. Oh goodness, what am I doing? I did not even read the questions and I'm already saying stupid things. I'm already reading ahead guys. <laughs> Sorry. Now they asked a question, define mechanical energy. I mean you guys know what mechanical energy is. Right? EM equals EP gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy that is that mechanical total mechanical energy of an isolated system remember this has to be an isolated system such that there's no energy dissipation because if it gets dissipated then you can't talk about it ne? in an isolated system is going to be equal to the sum of the gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy easy as that so you can put it in words I don't have a, a good writing, so I don't want to waste my time. Now, they said magnitude of the velocity of the pull as it reaches the ground. So I already was jumping into this question, which is that. So what are we going to do here? We can use our vertical projectile motion equations, which are essentially what? Equations of motion, but adapted for vertical motion instead of straight, uh, instead of a horizontal motion. All right, so we can also use this. So let's try the equations of motion. I like them. These things, you, you just have to master them. Because if you don't master them, they are going to master you. That is, they are going to deny you your best mark. So we know the initial velocity, we want the final velocity, we know the displacement, we know the acceleration. So we can use this formula, V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2 instead of a this time we write g delta y because displacement in the vertical you use y this implies what is the final velocity is what we are looking for what is the initial velocity there it is minus 3 comma 2 why am i saying minus because we chose up as positive all of it squared equal i mean plus 2 this is minus 9,8 because it's down as well. What is the displacement is 2 meters, but now it's going to be minus 2 meters because it's down. Okay? If we're displacing this ball upward, we're going to use plus. Therefore, we know that our V final is going to be equal to the square root of all of what we have here.
Okay, so let us do this square root of minus 3 comma 2 squared plus 2 into minus 9 comma 8 into minus 2. All right, so what do we get there? I get 7 comma 0 three newtons to two decimal places I mean meters per second but now what is this remember when you're taking a square root is a plus or minus so you're going to choose the minus this captures the direction but again if you forgot it you can be forgiven because they just asked magnitude and they didn't say just the velocity so that you can think of it as a vector quantity so they wanted to treat it as a scalar quantity so I mean this is easy formula correct substitution uh, maybe also these signs are important and then the answer there this is four marks where is the other one maybe that one yeah I mean this is mathematics so you're not gonna be awarded marks for that so don't even bet on it it's not a maths class this time Okay, let's do 5.2.3. That one was too, Baba. Don't know why I keep stalling. All right, um, that is easy. So you can do it that way. Okay, maybe let's not just leave it like that. Let's not just leave it like that. You need to see that you have a bit more options here. Let's see if we're getting the same answer. Sometimes this helps as well when you are not sure or maybe you made a mistake. Some options can remind you of what you're not doing right sometimes. Now let's see if we're going to get the same answer. We know that E M top is going to be equal to E M bottom. Isn't it? Conservation of mechanical energy. Now at the top, remember this ball is falling. Here it is moving at a velocity, but it's also elevated some height. So there's both kinetic and gravitational potential energy there. So we know that this is going to be EP top plus EK top, which must be equal to, but at the bottom, there's only EK. There's no EP. Okay, not a problem. So then we work this out and say, what is that? That's M G H plus half M V squared. All of these are scalar quantities, so forget the signs. Don't focus on the signs at this point. Now, what is the story here? That was 0, 0,06 multiplied by 9,8 so don't write minus 9,8 multiplied by 2 meters okay plus half into 0, 0, uh, 6, 0. Uh that one was the same okay uh, multiplied by the velocity don't write the negative please 3,2 squared equals a half of 0, 0,60 times v squared which is what we are looking for right not a problem so let's keep working there now we can easily isolate our v squared it's going to be equal to this situation here yeah maybe let's clean it up a bit so we're just gonna add them all together so we have here 0, 0,6 0 times 9,8 times 2 so this is going to be 11,76 plus let's do this one 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,60 0, times 3,2 squared so I get zero a uh, 
I get 3,072. All right. And all of this is going to divide by 0, 0,5 into 0, 0,60. Yeah, it's working on me. It's working on me. Therefore, V is going to be the square root of this situation. Okay, so what is that? So I have that plus 11,76 divide by 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,60, which is just 0, 0,3. And then I get that, okay? And then, let's see, we're taking the square root of that answer. is the same answer, ne? So this square root sign... Now this time you can say minus because we know that it's directed down. It's a velocity, it's minus 7, 0, 0,03 meters per second. So if you write the sign, it already captures the direction because of your choice. Okay, guys, that is essentially that, all right? Not a big deal. So, I mean, I was just trying to show you, but do you see this one is a bit more complicated in that? It involves a lot of parameters where you can have a room for errors. But in the end, this final step is similar to that. It gives you the same answer. All right. Just wanted to show you that. Otherwise, nothing serious. Now, let's move quickly. Now, we are told here, the ball rebounds vertically and leaves the ground. Okay with a velocity of 1,6 meters per second upwards. And then we know upward is positive. The ball is in contact with the ground for, once you hear the time of contact, you know that you are dealing with an impulse, isn't it? And which is a maximum height h. So if it is a maximum height h, we already know that the velocity there is 0 meters per second. Okay, the question says define an impulse. You already know the, de the definition here. So this is F res, ne? the resultant force times, four, times the time of its action is equal to the change in momentum. So you can just say the impulse of an object is the duration of action of a resultant force. Okay, on that object or by that object or you can say it is the object's change in momentum easy ne? so I'm going to keep it like that so both sides this time are giving you that definition so you choose whichever you like and you write it down in words calculate the magnitude of the average force that the ground exerts. So basically you are being asked to calculate the normal force because if the ground is exerting, you want the normal force, right? Because if we have our basketball here, it's sitting on the ground as it bounces, it is going to have its weight directed down and the ground is going to have the normal force directed upward. So, some people are annoying and they like to phone and sell rubbish. Anyway, but now what do we notice? This ball, this ball eventually bounces back up. So what does that suggest? It suggests that there is a resultant force in the direction of the normal force. Now, if we have a resultant force, then we can talk about the impulse because the impulse is actually the resultant force, isn't it? So that means our normal force is essentially greater than our weight because these are the only two forces acting in the orientation of this motion. There's no other horizontal forces. If they are there, they cancelled each other out a long time ago. So do you see here, you need to consider this. Of course, this is the ball. So that's the ball over there. 
So we have to think about this force diagram. So what do we need for us to get this force? We first want the resultant in terms of the impulse. From there, we're going to consider this weight and the normal force, but we're interested in the size of that normal force. Okay, so let's go for it and do it nice and easy. Again, here you have a few options. You can use equations of motion, you know. I mean, we know the initial velocity, which is this one here. We found it to be 5, no, 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 7, comma 0, 0,3 meters per second. Of course, that was down. So we know the initial velocity, right? And then we know the final velocity is going to be this one. This is the velocity with which this ball is going to leave the ground, which is 1,6 meters per second. And between these two velocities, it took the time 0, 0,02 seconds for this to happen. So we can actually determine the acceleration because we know from Newton's second law the resultant force is the product of the mass of the ball and its acceleration, right? And what direction is this, this acceleration going to be? Remember this ball was moving down so it changed direction therefore it must be in the opposite direction so it's essentially a deceleration now compared to its initial motion. So we can do this, we can do this. So let's, let's use our versatile technique here. So 5, 2, 4. So what we need, we want first the acceleration. So here we know the initial, we know the final, we know the time. So we can use say V final equals V initial plus acceleration times delta T. Very terrible things here, but yeah, you like them, guys. So this one was positive 1,6 equals. This one was negative minus 0, 0,7. I mean, minus 7, 0, 0,3. Is that the one? Let me just double check. Yes, that's the one. Okay, plus A into the time is 0, 0, 0,02. So it's a scalar quantity. You never put a sign for time. All right, therefore, our acceleration is essentially going to be 1,6. When you transpose that, it becomes plus 7,03 divided by 0, 0,02. So let's find out what this is. So 1,6, in fact, it's going to be 8,63. Why am I even wasting my breath? This is 8,63 over 0, 0,02. But why am I prolonging it? I don't know. You know, sometimes this mind of mine plays tricks on me. It loves to waste my time. But hey, so I'm getting here 431,5 meters per second squared. And then, of course, it's positive, right? To tell me that it's going upward, as I expected. All right, so I'm happy now. So I can use my Sir Isaac Newton's second law of motion, which means my resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. What is the mass of this ball is 0, 0,60 multiplied by now. This acceleration is 431,5. And what is that? 0, 0,60 times 4. 431,5. I'm getting here 258,90 newtons. Of course, it is positive. So the resultant force, I expected it to be directed upward in my sketch diagram. And it is positive indeed. So I don't have to say upward, but if you want, you can say. But now, this implies what? What is the resultant force? From our force diagram here, we know that if this force is bigger than this, it's going to be that one minus that one. So it's the normal force multiplied, I mean minus the weight, is going to be equal to um, this one, 258,90. Okay? Which implies also that N minus into, once you put the negative in front, you don't have to 
to think about it here, 0, 0,60 times 9,8. This is the same, treat it the same way as I just took the common factor out and left everything positive because if you're going to put a negative here then it messes up everything. Ideally you just wanted to say the addition but because they're in opposite directions you're going to subtract so that is the essence of that. 2,58,90 all right so this my also implies that my normal force is going to be 258,90 plus when you transpose this 0, 0,60 times 9,8 therefore our normal force which is what they want the force of the ground is going to be this one 0, 0,60 times 9,8 so what I'm getting here is 264,78 Newtons and then of course it's positive so it's directed up because they okay they said magnitude so you don't have to worry about direction but like I said always think about it because it's necessary at times and they don't tell you. So this is essentially the force the ground is exerting upward so don't make a mistake of thinking the resultant force is your answer you will burn so don't forget don't forget your free body diagrams or your force diagrams whatever you guys were taught now is there any other way of dealing with this let's try and use our impulse because they asked us to do the impulse so let's see when we use the impulse will we get the same answer so that you can see that there are options all the time. So let's say F res delta T equals um, change in momentum. This implies that our resultant force multiplied by the time is 0, 0,02. It's a scalar quantity, so no issues there. What is the change in momentum? It's just the mass of the object, which is 0, 0,60 into the final velocity is going to be that 1,6 right minus what was the initial velocity is minus 7 comma 0 3 then you close again negatives you treat them as such don't forget vectors you're always going to make them you're going to always make up for them this implies that my resultant force is going to be 0 comma 6 0 into 1 comma 6 plus now when you simplify this 1 comma 0 7 yeah 7 comma 0 3 all of that divide by that that time 0 comma 0 2 let's see what is that so we have 0 comma 6 0 into 1 comma 6 plus 7,03 which is just 8,63 don't know why I didn't do that but it doesn't matter divide by 0, 0,02 I get here 258,90 newtons and you can tell this is positive but remember that is the resultant force that we got there Again, you still need this diagram. So you know that this implies the normal force minus the weight is going to be 258,90. Which therefore tells you that your N is going to be 258,90 plus W. Which is 258,90 plus 0, 0,60 times 9,8. Remember that negative was made up there. So therefore your final answer is going to be the same as the one above 264,78 Newtons. And for the fact that it's positive, it follows our choice of direction. Alright guys, I hope you liked that one. So that was the 7 marks, a little bit easy on the last part because you get your marks there 
you get your marks for these substitutions there and then for getting the resultant force four marks and then for this expression especially those ones and then you can say correct substitution and the answer one two three four five six seven so the seven marks in the bag here it's a bit split you get your marks for that you get your marks for that you get your marks for that and that you get your marks for this and that so it's one two three four five six so we can decide uh, where else do we want to give you a mark maybe for this formula I mean, doesn't really matter we can we can just try and manufacture it there so when there's too many steps it becomes a little bit cumbersome as to where the marks are but you can get the ID of course I thought they were going to ask me that height um, of course this is the end of this one so that was worth 29 marks and I hope you enjoyed that ride otherwise that's that's the end of it okay I thought they were going to ask you this height if they did always think about g is minus 9,8 your initial velocity becomes this one your final velocity becomes that one then you can use that same velocity v squared equals u squared plus 2as okay I mean you have your v final equals v initial plus 2g delta y yeah whatever anyway that is it guys uh, thank you very much for your patience and for watching this video I appreciate uh, your involvement in this uh, exercise so uh, I hope you like it and you're gonna give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed maybe consider doing it because I'll still continue to do as much as I can and I hope it is to your taste otherwise guys bye bye see you in the next video whichever it will be cool